Today I'm going to be talking all about making perfume rollers start to finish. So if you are interested in that, stay tuned for the rest of this video. Hi there. If you're new to my channel, I'm Steph. My company is Bushel. I make handmade soap, candles, bath salts, lip balm, all kinds of things. And I talk about the behind the scenes of running a business like mine on this channel. So if that's something you're interested in, go ahead and subscribe so you're notified every time I release a new video. Today is gonna to be all about perfume rollers. This is a new product for me. And whenever I introduce something new, I love to give a behind the scenes of the whole process of introducing a new product to my line, my collection, whatever you wanna call it. And that's what I'll be doing with perfume. So the first thing I guess really to cover is why did I choose perfume as the next product to work on? And there's always like a few reasons. Some of it is just what am I interested in doing next? Because that's, I think, an important part of what you do as a business owner. If you're not excited by or challenged by in a good way, the things that you're working on, it's really easy to get burnt out or bored and I wanna make sure that whatever is in front of me is something that I really feel engaged in. It just makes the work feel less like work. And also I'd had people ask me about it in different like venues. So sometimes a custom client who I made candles for was curious about like, do I also do perfume? Cause they kind of wanted a perfume in the same scent as the candle. I've had one of my Retail clients ask me about perfume because it's a product that they want to carry and they would prefer to carry a perfume made by someone they already work with. Or even just at markets, people asking about perfume, if they really like a fragrance in a candle or in a soap, they might want it in a perfume as well because obviously it's just a different way to use that scent. So I had had people ask about it and knowing that I already had all of the ingredients that I needed, made it easier to say like, okay, it's time to sort of experiment with this. The thing about perfume that had made me hesitate to jump into it even sooner is just packaging. Deciding on packaging is always such a struggle for me. I really enjoy it when it all comes together and it looks great, but the process of like sort of trial and error, ordering samples, not liking the sample, trying to find something else, finding something that I like that's at the right price point, it's, it's pretty overwhelming and sometimes just like makes it not worth the effort. And I, and I just set something aside until I feel like I have the bandwidth to look into it. And perfume was one of those things. I really wanted the packaging to reflect my brand and be up to my standards, but also not be so expensive that it didn't, didn't make the price point workable. Another great thing about perfume that made me think like, okay, it's time to dive into this is that there's no cure time. <laughs> There's no time between when you make the product and when you can sell it. That's also the case with like lip balm or, um, you know, there are other products that have that same quality, but my soap, that's not the case at all. The candles you do want to cure for a week or two if you can. And it just makes it a little bit harder to last minute produce products for a market or an event or something like that because it's just not feasible to make something the night before and then sell it. So what I love about perfume is that you absolutely could do that. If I were going to have like a pop-up here in the store and I was running low on perfume, I could make something the night before, even the morning of, and be able to sell it right away. And that's just that's just very exciting. I'd love to have more products where that's the case. That was another check in the column of why to do perfume next. Once I knew I was going to offer perfume, there's a few next steps that I was kind of working on simultaneously. One of them is what recipe was I going to use? Obviously, there's an option between a spray perfume or a perfume oil. A uh, spray is usually like alcohol or witch hazel based, and then a perfume oil is oil-based. And that was a pretty easy decision for me. I personally, like as a consumer, prefer a perfume oil. I just like the way it goes on. I like that there's not that sort of like sting of alcohol, even though that evaporates. Um, still just like initially makes it a little bit too, I don't know, intense. And I already have oils in my ingredient you know, supply. I also have witch hazel, but for me, 
I think the smell of witch hazel is pretty strong. I have a sensitive nose, so I'm sure that that's part of it, but I don't like the idea of using witch hazel as a base for something because to me, the smell of witch hazel is always there and it messes with the actual fragrance. So I didn't want to do that personally. If I were ever to do a room spray, some people use witch hazel as a base for a room spray, but I'm not interested in that either. Same sort of reason. So I knew pretty early on that I was going to do perfume oil. That being said, there's still a lot of options for what type of oil to use as your perfume oil base. You do want to use something that doesn't have a fragrance to it, obviously. So like an olive oil would not be a good base for a perfume oil because that olive is going to come through. So I had a couple of oils that I really like that are part of my soap recipe or my lip balm recipe. And I settled on sweet almond oil. I just really like the consistency of it. It's it has no scent to me. And I already get a lot of it because I use it in both my lip balm and my soap. So that was pretty easy. I also added in some vitamin E oil, which luckily I had on hand. I had bought some a while ago because I maybe it was for the sake of perfume and I just like bought it and then held on to it. I can't remember why I purchased it, but I got a small amount. And um, you really only need a little bit in the perfume oil mixture. It's also nice because it acts as like a nat natural preservative. And then I obviously already have the fragrances on hand. And so figuring out the recipe was pretty straightforward. Luckily, perfume oil is not particularly complicated the way that like soap is. Even candles, like you have to figure out how are these things going to go together. Perfume oil, it's pretty straightforward. And then the other thing I was working on at the same time, because the recipe I have to work on here at my studio, but the thing that I can work on when I'm at home or just like on my phone killing time is searching for packaging. Like I said, this is a huge part of the whole process for me, getting something that I feel fits with my brand, looks the way I want it to look, has all of the characteristics that I feel make it come across as a high quality product but also at a reasonable price point so that I'm not losing money on my margins. So I, I looked at smaller sizes, larger sizes, amber glass, clear glass, green glass, what color cap. There's so many combinations. And again, it is something that's really easy to get overwhelmed by, but I felt like I found a bottle that I really liked. It is this one here, and this is from Makesy. Um, and so I bought it and loved it because I, I like that it's a little bit longer because it gives you more, obviously more product, but it's still small enough to like drop into your purse or even like a coat pocket. And so it feels like you're getting a significant amount. Like this size perfume oil, if you wear it every single day, the size is gonna last you like two to three months. So I just really liked this whole, I felt like, okay, great. I've found my packaging. And then I placed an order for a hundred of these and I kept waiting for it to ship out. And Macy sent me an email and they were like, so sorry, we're not getting these from our supplier. We don't know when we're going to get them next. So we have to refund you for this order. So that was a real bummer because I had already also figured out what size label to buy for this. And I had ordered them. <laughs> And so I was like, okay, great. I'm going to need to start over, basically. I will say, you'd think it's the sort of thing where it's really easy to just find this size from another supplier. And you would be wrong. It is not as easy as you might think to find the right proportions. Like I said, I had already bought labels that were like the entire size of this shape. So even if I found something like an inch shorter, it would mess up the labels, which again, I could just order new labels, but you hate to, I hate to waste things. So I was really frustrated. And then I did find after lots of searching, thinking I was going to have to go another way. I did find this almost exactly the same. I will say that size of the cap is like slightly larger on the new one, which I actually like better. Um, so that's great. But otherwise, pretty much exactly the same. Huge relief because now the labels that I bought will work with this. But this was not easy. Again, it's the sort of thing you think would be easy. It was not easy. These just came today actually in the mail. I'm very excited about that. And once I had my packaging, 
then you can figure out what am I going to be able to charge for this? Or like, what's the right price point for this? Because that is something you have to do once you figure out the ingredients. And you can't figure out all of the different elements of one perfume until you know how much the packaging is going to cost. And then the other thing is, is that this, obviously the size dictates how much of each ingredient you use per item. And so once I had that packaging finalized, I could break down what does it cost me to make one of these and then what can I charge or what should I charge based on knowing that information. You also wanna factor in where your brand stands in the market in terms of are you a luxury brand? Are you a budget-friendly brand? So you, know, you might wanna tweak the price based on that, but you really can't get the full picture until you know your packaging and how much it's gonna cost you to make each unit. Once I know how much it's gonna cost me, what it's gonna look like, kind of, then I have to figure out what fragrances do I start with. When you're introducing a new product, I think it's best to start with a limited amount of scents. You know, when I launched my candle line, I think I started with six scents. And with a perfume oil, it's the same sort of thing. You want enough of a range where you feel like you can offer something to all different tastes. So somebody who likes earthy scents, somebody who likes floral, somebody who likes fresh citrus. So I wanted to get a little bit of each of those, but you also don't wanna offer too many because you don't wanna make a bunch and then realize, oh, nobody's interested in this one scent that I had. So for me, there's a couple of no brainers. My Palo Santo is my best selling fragrance no matter the product. Right now it's only in my candles, but it's definitely gonna be a perfume oil. So that one I know for sure. In fact, I feel like I could potentially just launch my perfume oils with only Palo Santo being offered and still sell a decent amount because it's, for the people who work with me, they know that scent and they love that scent. And even people who don't work with me, Palo Santo is a really popular scent right now. So I feel like they'd still potentially buy it just because people love it. I also think that Amour, which is a candle of mine that is a little bit more of like a romantic floral, is another solid one to add to the line. Like I said, it's got that sort of floral note, but it's not overly flowery. It doesn't read as like grandma. It's a little bit... Um, dark and like mysterious. So I think that's a good one too. And then right now I'm just sort of struggling on what are the like fresh and fruity or like more light notes to add to the lineup. I don't have that figured out yet, but I, I'm getting closer. I'm definitely narrowing it down. I certainly have some seasonal fragrances that people love that I'd love to offer in a perfume roller as well but I have to figure out the best way to work seasonal scents into a perfume line. I don't think it's normal or like, I don't think it's traditionally done to have seasonal perfumes. I think it's the sort of thing where people find a fragrance that they like and they use that all the time. So I really want to focus on year round scents. And I also want to be able to offer some like gender neutral scents. Uh, some of the stuff that I have, like that Amour is pretty feminine. The Palo Santo, I think, could go either way. I am test. I'm actually like wearing, wearing one right now that I'm testing out that I feel like is pretty um, gender neutral. It's a little bit of like a warm, woodsy kind of note with some like amber and uh, it's just really nice. So that's one, but then I still need, I need like light, clean scents as well. So that's the tricky part. I think I like to launch maybe five cents when I initially offer it and then slowly add in more as I see what people are responding to. And then last but not least, certainly not least, if anything, it's it's like 50% of this work is the label design. I toyed around with a few different looks. The best way for me to successfully design a label, and by successfully, I just mean that like, I really like it and I feel good about it, is to just dive in. I usually start with something that looks completely different from where I end up, but if I don't just have a starting point, it takes me forever to sort of like gather inspiration. So I started with something that I went 
very far from. And I'm really happy with what I ended up with. It's pretty minimal, which I love. I think that it's, again, something that is going to look really nice if it's sitting on your bathroom counter or on your nightstand or on your vanity um, or even on your desk at work. Who knows? Wherever you're keeping this perfume oil, I like that it has a nice presentation so you can have it out and it doesn't take away from wherever it's sitting. So I'm really excited about that. I don't have a hard timeline for when I'll be launching them, but I do have my Mother's Day pop up on May 13th and I would love to have them here in the store for that day because I think it's such a great gift for Mother's Day or for yourself, whoever is coming to shop this pop up. I think that it's definitely going to be something that people are interested in. And so I'd love to have it ready for that. So that gives me about two weeks. Like I said, all of the packaging is here. So it's really just a matter of mixing and pouring the scents that I know I'm going to go with and then finalizing those other scents. And then I'm pretty much ready. And then obviously I'll have to also photograph it, the finished product, not only for my wholesale catalog to send out to my retail customers, but also for my website so I can offer it online. And then I'll be ready to put it out into the world. So I think that I can do that all in two weeks. Uh, I have i don't know. Sometimes I have some time blindness around projects like this. But I think at the very least, I could get Palo Santo ones out and this one I'm testing and the Amore. So worst case scenario, I launched with three. Still, still really good. And I think it'll be fun to get it out there and see how people react to it. That's it for the perfume oil. I hope this video was helpful. Please let me know in the comments section any questions you have or what, what you are thinking in terms of perfume for your own business or as a consumer, what you like. Thank you so much for watching. Go ahead and like this video if you enjoyed it so that I can help reach other viewers like you. And I will see you in the next video.